Right. So hi, I'm Barb Archer. It's A-R-C-H-E-R. And as Sunny said, the commander of the Major Crimes Division. So I'm going to give you an update on the incident that happened on Saturday morning in the early hours of the 2800 block of South Quitman, where we had an officer who was shot. So the, the call started out with officers being sent to the address around 4.30 in the morning on a welfare check on a party who was making suicidal statements to his friends uh, via text messages. The messages included concerns that he was injuring himself and that he possibly had access to a gun. So the first officer arrived there about 4.40. They saw the garage door was open and there was a male standing just inside that garage. The officer took a position of cover and started talking to the male. Um, he was agitated, he was making angry statements. Other officers arrived and together they continued their efforts to de-escalate this male through verbal negotiations and telling them that they were there to help him. They didn't want to hurt him. Uh, officers and supervisors on the scene formulated a plan. They used cover and concealment while they negotiated with the male. The officers had less lethal equipment with them with plans to safely take the male into custody and get him the help that he needed. He wasn't receptive to their efforts to help him. Uh, they continued to work on de-escalating him and establishing a rapport, and this went on for about 25 minutes. Over that course of the 25 minutes, the male continued to make angry statements and was not cooperating with the officer's requests. Suddenly, he pulled out a handgun and he rapidly moved towards the officers who had a position of cover and he fired his gun at them. The officers immediately responded to that threat. One officer fired his taser and the second officer fired his handgun at the male, striking him several times. And it's important to note when we deploy less lethal weaponry such as a taser, we also deploy lethal cover and that was this, the case in this situation. So the injured officer, he was taken to a nearby hospital and underwent surgery for a fractured femur. He's in stable condition. He remains hospitalized. Uh, his recovery outlook is good, so we're hopeful there. Uh, the injured male was taken to the hospital with injuries to his torso, and he is still hospitalized and is, remains in critical condition. That male has been identified as Brandon Gerwing. Brandon is B-R-A-N-D-O-N, -N, Gerwing. G-E-R-W-I-N-G, -E and he's being held for investigation of attempt first-degree murder and first-degree assault on a peace officer. We did recover a gun that we believe he fired at the officers. I'll tell you about the officers who were involved. The injured officer uh, is named John Allred. That's spelled A-L-L-R-E-D. Officer Allred's been with the department for just barely a year. He's been on the street as a solo officer for three weeks, having just recently completed his training. The other officer involved who fired his weapon is Sergeant Chad Kendall. He's been with the police department for 11 years, and he is currently on administrative leave. So all Denver police officer involved shootings are investigated cooperatively with the Aurora Police Department and the Denver District Attorney's Office per our established protocol. Uh, I know you've got questions about body-worn camera video. We will release that as soon as we can. Right now, we still need to interview the injured officer and the suspect before we can release that information to you. We're open. We're committed to being open and transparent, and we'll release what we can as soon as we can. So, that's it. Any questions? Did the bullet shatter the leg of the officer? Yes. Officer Kendall's name, Sergeant Kendall, could you spell his last name, please? K-E-N-D-A-L-L. Yes, sir. The other officer you said less than a year? Could be specific? He just completed his training program. He's been on the street as a sole officer for three months, or three weeks, excuse me. He just completed his training program. No. Solo. Solo officer, right. He's been working by himself. Uh, he was hired in July, completed the police academy, then completed the street training program, and then was released to be a solo officer. You said he had Correct. Did he hit you? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So which one fired? Was it the sergeant or the new officer? Fired what? The ones that... So the new officer fired the taser and the sergeant fired his handgun. Who was the first on the scene? Was it the new officer or the veteran? No, there were five officers on scene. I do not know which one was first. Uh, there was a, a team of supervisors and officers you know, put together their plan to try and get this man the help he needed. The officer with the taser, uh, Officer Allred, was he the one that was speaking or negotiating with the uh, No, the officers were negotiating from the suspect from a different position. Gotcha. But that didn't include either of the two officers? Correct. Yes. So when they use legal force, they also use non-legal force? 
Not necessarily. They were prepared to use less lethal force. They had not seen a gun prior to that point in this situation. We were told he had access to a gun, but we hadn't seen him with one. Commander, what do we know about the 25 minutes that kind of led up to this shooting? I mean, they were trying to negotiate with him. I'm sure all those officers had uh, you know, CIT training. Right. Yes, all of our police officers are CIT trained, crisis, which is crisis intervention training. Um, we're to de-escalate and try to talk people into compliance and so we can get them into the situation where they can get the help they need. Uh, Do we know what happened there or where they were kind of in the driveway? Or so they were, kind of uh, they were a, a, in an area where they could see and talk with the suspect and negotiating with them and he knew they were there. He was yelling back at them but again not complying with their request to uh, just come out where we could see you and let us come help you. We're here to help you. We don't want to hurt you. Uh, you mentioned body cam video. How much longer do you think before that's released? A few more days? At, at least a week. We need time to in interview the injured officer, and obviously we can't do that yet while he's still under medical care. <clears throat> Mr. Gerwin, you said, had sustained multiple gunshot wounds? He was struck several times, yes. Any idea how many times? I don't know yet. Yes, he he's critical. He does not. How old is he? 23. Is this the first interaction your department has had with Mr. Sherman? No, we were at his house in October on a similar situation, and in that, that turned out where we were able to get it quickly under control and off to medical treatment. So that didn't result in an arrest or charges or anything? Like no, that? just uh, taken to the hospital for treatment. He used social media. Uh, Snapchat may be one of those resources. So Snapchat was used? It's possible. During the, the, yeah, the information we had was text messages. But it's possible. It's possible there was Snapchat. As you know, Snapchat disappears right. once it's sent. So I, I can't verify that right now. Do you know roughly how far away the officers were from the suspect? Which officers? The ones well, who are? Either, either one or one. So when the officers were negotiating with them, they were probably 100 feet? No, when when the shots were fired, you to me. Ten feet. Wow. Very, very close. Well, both the officers were in close proximity to each other? Or? Yes. Yeah, they had a position of cover on the side of the garage, and that's where the suspect decided to turn. Did they know he was armed during this negotiation? We had not process, seen a gun. Kind of no, nope. yeah. we had not seen a gun up to that point. Well, they're very tense and they're very volatile when you have somebody with unpredictable behavior and when they uh, appear to be under the influence of substances. In this case, we suspect it was alcohol. Uh, we're not sure if there were other substances. So you're dealing with somebody who's erratic, clearly in a crisis, and you, just, you don't know where it's going to go, and you do the best you can to communicate with them and find that conversation point that will help them calm down and de-escalate and help them realize that we want to get them the help that they need. Personal crisis. He was taken to a hospital. I don't know what his treatment was after that. That wouldn't be a police matter. Yes. No, just the officer who fired his handgun. Was he talking to the Was he responding to what they asked him to do at all? He was not responding. Uh, by complying, but he was responding with yelling, you know, go away, I don't need you, I know my rights type of statements. When we when he's booked, he's still in the hospital. All right guys. Thank you. Okay. Can you tell us the age of John? He's twenty three.